Look, let me blow your mind a little bit here, okay? In the data packet, we've got uh, F equals MA. That's not exactly mind-blowing. Not in the data packet, we've got forces minus K times displacement, right? Okay? And so this means that if we've got, you know, some mass, here's an equilibrium position, right? We've got the mass is actually here, right? We've got the spring, okay? That means that there's actually a force. This is our position, right? And maybe it's on its way. It's moving, right? It's going to make it all the way out to here. Here's our x naught, right? But if it's at some position x like that, right, it means that there's a force actually acting opposite the displacement. The displacement is to the right, right? We're to the right of equilibrium. That's our x. But the force is actually acting to the left. So if we're to the right of, of equilibrium, the spring is actually pulling us back toward the middle, right? And if we set those equal, if we set ma equal to minus kx, right, then we can, um, we actually can solve for the acceleration, right? Acceleration is minus kx over m, right? Okay. Now, let's do a little calculus. Okay, there's x is uh, x naught sine omega t, right? Okay, if I take the derivative of this, dx dt is actually equal to velocity, right? Is equal to, and then this is how it works. It, um, the derivative of sine is cosine. In other words, the slope of a sine graph is cosine. And then there's something called, a, I think it's a chain rule or something, right? Where you take or, uh, the omega comes out in front. So you end up with omega x naught cos omega t. Well, you know, you can you can compare that, right? The formula they give you is that v is v naught cos omega t. That's in the data packet. But we know, we've done enough of these problems, we know v naught is omega x naught, right? Okay, and there it is, right? That's why it is, because it's all just calculus, okay? And then if I take the derivative again, dv, the rate at which velocity changes is acceleration, of course, right? And then if I do the derivative again, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? Okay, and so it's, and then the omega comes out again, so you get omega squared, so omega times omega is omega squared, right? x naught uh, sine omega t. And I showed you this on the first day, how, how the um, acceleration is negative of what this is. And that's because, of course, if our displacement's to the right, the, uh, um, the force is actually to the left. That's what the minus sign is there, right? Okay. And there is no formula in the data packet for acceleration. Okay. Now, at this point, let's just pause for a moment. Okay. The maximum acceleration from this would be mat maximum displacement, right? For this guy, our maximum acceleration is, well, it's just omega squared x naught. Well, look at these two. This we got from dynamics. This we got from doing a bunch of calculus, right? And I don't care if you don't understand the calculus. You will someday. Okay. Check, check this out. What this means is that, that um, let's get rid of the minus sign there, right? That means that omega squared is k over m. So that means that omega is the square root of k over m, and we've done this in class, we've talked about this in class, okay? Um, but this makes sense, right? The more mass you have, the slower it goes. This is like the angular frequency, right? The more mass you have, the slower it goes, the more springy it is, the faster it goes, okay? So just hang on to this idea. Omega is uh, square root of k over m, okay? And we'll just kind of let the animations go through. I need to get to the next page, right? Okay, now, of course, the maximum kinetic energy of, of the object is going to be one half m max velocity squared, right? The maximum potential energy is going to be um, one half k x naught squared, right? So where do they happen? Well, I'll show you, right? Of course, that uh, maximum kinetic energy happens in the middle. Potential energy happens um, at the edges, right? Okay, so then you know it's like, how do we derive these? These are like these million dollar formulas, right? Um, well. The kinetic energy, right, kinetic energy is just your total energy, right, your total energy uh, minus the, uh, um, the potential energy, right? Isn't that right? If you knew that, say, the oscillator had 10 joules and 2 joules were potential, 8 joules would be kinetic, right? Okay, the total energy has to be this guy, right, because at the edge there's no kinetic energy, so the total energy has to be your one-half uh, kx naught squared, right? Okay. And then your uh, potential energy at any given point is um, 
just one half k x squared, right? Right. So we're we're at some point that's that's uh, not at the very edge, right? Okay, and that's got to be our kinetic energy. Okay, and then it's like, uh, how do we figure this out? Well, um, check it out, right? If 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 I if I plug in here, if I'm if I'm clever about this, right? Okay, obviously I can say that the kinetic energy is one half k times uh, x naught squared minus uh, x squared, right? So it's looking a lot like this thing, but how is, that must mean that k is equal to m times omega squared, right? And of course it is, right? Because uh, k omega is the square root of k over m, right? And if we square that, right? This is just a, uh, m omega squared is just a ridiculous way to write k, yeah? Isn't it? Because look at this, right? Um, yeah, is that right? EK is that? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, 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 I see, I see, divided by M. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like arguing myself into a circle here, right? Okay, so how do we get that? It must also be... Oh, no, 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 no. M omega squared must equal K. That's what it must be, right? Okay, so M times the square root of K over M squared, right? And indeed it is, right? Isn't that right? Because the M is going to cancel and you'll end up with K, right? So that, that's what it is, right? Okay, so, so M omega squared is the same as K, okay? So we've now derived this formula. We can substitute M omega squared, right? And so we get EK is one half M omega squared times X naught squared minus X squared. There we go, okay? So I've derived it from this thing, right? Um, and then just stop and pause a moment here, okay? Uh, notice that uh, if I just use kinetic energy, it isn't, hasn't always been just one half mv squared, right? So if you plug that in for v, right, and square it, don't you get, don't you get uh, one half m and then omega squared, and then it's not the square root of that anymore, right? It's just uh, x naught squared minus x squared, right? So if I just simply plug that in for v, one half mv squared, right, I'll get the kinetic energy, right, and then. Um, they give us these two formulas. They say EK max. They also say total energy, right? They, they give the same one, right, equals this. Do you see that that's just, um, that V naught is uh, omega X naught, right? So if I plug omega X naught in for V, I get this guy, right? Okay, so these are just two ridiculous formulas. We don't, why, why do they give us these two, right? But but here's why, right? That the, when, when you have maximum kinetic energy, you have no potential energy. Right, and so this is the maximum potential. It's also the maximum kinetic. It's also the total energy. Okay. So yeah, there we go. Let's go and do um, an example. Yeah, here we go. Right. Okay. So here, when it oscillates back and forth, this is maximum uh, maximum kinetic energy in the middle, where it's moving the fastest. At the edges, it has no kinetic energy because it's not moving. Because if it were moving, it wouldn't be at the edge, right? And then potential energy is, of course, the max at the edges. The spring is distorted the most and when it's at the edges. In the middle, it has no potential energy. So these guys are like out of phase from each other. Okay. Uh, and then this is, you could write these down. Okay. This is T is the total energy. Uh, EK max is maximum kinetic energy. This EK is the uh, kinetic energy at any given point, right? And then you know all of those. Right. I'm going to go on to the next slide and do an example problem. Okay, so in S, a simple harmonic oscillator has an amplitude of 0.48 meters, a mass of 1.12 kilograms, a period of 0.86 seconds, right? So what's its angular velocity? Well, its angular velocity is omega is 2 pi over t, right? So it's 2 pi over 0.86 seconds. Right, so that's uh, on two times pi divided by 0.86. I'm being paged 7.306 radians per second. All right. Okay, what is its maximum kinetic energy? Well, EK max, right, is one half, that's a two, m omega squared x naught squared, right? Okay, so that's one half 
times uh, 1.12 kilograms. There's that number again. That was like a key number to me when I was writing these, right? Um, times, um, and I'll just go 2 pi over 0.86, right? Squared, right? So it's this number here, right? Uh, and then uh, our amplitude is 0.48, right? So 0.48 squared, okay. So 0.5 times 1.12 times parentheses 2 times pi divided by 0.86 right parentheses squared times 0.48 squared. And I get 6.887 joules. Okay. And then it says, what's its max? What's its maximum kinetic energy? There it is, right? Its total energy is exactly the same thing. You, know, you could use the same formula over again and get that that's what it is, right? Okay. By the way, its maximum potential energy is also 6.887, right? Because when it has maximum potential energy, it's not moving. It's at the edges, right? So, so there we have it, right? Okay. Let's go to the next one here. Uh, let's see, what is its kinetic energy 0.23 meters from equilibrium? What's its potential energy there, right? So uh, I'm going to use the fancy formula, right? EK is equal to 1 half m omega squared x naught squared minus x squared, right? Okay, so we can just plug in here, right? It's equal to 1 half 1.12 kilograms. Right times uh, two pi over 0.86. Right, that's my, I'm using omega is two pi over t. That formula for this, right? Because there's our period, right? Okay, and then it's going to be uh, 0.48 squared minus uh, where are we? 0.23. Okay. So I'm going to store that in a, the answer, the 6.887 from the previous problem, right? So now I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to barf that thing up, right? And now all I have to do is make this 0.48 squared. So 0.5 times 1.12 times the quantity 2 times pi divided by 0.86, that quantity squared times, and now I've got a left parenthesis, 0.48 squared minus 0.23 squared, right parenthesis. And I've got 5.306 is the answer. Joules, that's how much is uh, kinetic energy, right? This is Ke, that's our kinetic energy, right? Okay, now then it says, what is the potential energy? Well, the total energy is 6.887 joules. We don't have a formula for potential energy, but I know that, that um, kinetic energy plus potential energy, right? If I add those together, I'm going to get 6.887, right? Okay, so what do you add to 5.306 to get 6.887? It's a concept of subtraction. Okay, I've got to subtract. So 6.887 minus, and I got 1.581 is what you got to put in here, right? Joules, right? So this is your potential energy, right? Here's your kinetic energy. Okay. Add those together, you get uh, 6.887 total energy, right? Joules total. Yeah. And that's the only way to get potential energy, right? Okay. Write uh, possible equations for its position and velocity. Well, let's start in the middle going up. Okay. So it's going to be. Um, x equals x naught sine omega t, right? Okay. The amplitude is 0.48, and then it's sine of, and then our, our omega is is uh, 2 pi over uh, t, right? So it's 2 pi over 0.86 is 7.306 radians per second, right? So it's going to be sine 7.306 t is equal to x. Okay, that's possible, right? Oh no, come on. Definitely started off moving to the side. Okay, so then our velocity is v naught uh, cos omega t, right? Okay, so now we got to figure out what v naught is, okay? 
So B is uh, omega plus or minus omega x naught squared minus x squared, right? Okay, so we're going to go uh, 7.306 times the square root of, and then it's it's uh, 0.48, right? Squared minus 0 squared, right? So really it's just 7.306 times 0.48, right? Okay. So, oh, that, they've just got the answer in terms of that. I'm going to give you a real answer there. Okay, I'm going to go uh, 7.306 times 0.48. Right, I got 3.507. Right? So the velocity is 3.507. And this is meters. This guy is meters per second. Right? Uh, cosine of 7.306. T, right? Is that right? 0.48 times. Yeah, we got it. All right. I think that's all there is. Yeah.